Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where we are recording, audio's working, everything's good, I need to be extra paranoid. Actually, actually did I not? I'm gonna save again, I'm gonna freaking save right now. Uh, kitty don't do it. Uh, kitty stop, kitty. There's like, I'm cat sitting for my sister right now. And the cat is deciding it maybe wants affection but it wants to do it by rubbing its face on my laptop. Don't do that please. Okay, it reached its fill of affection. Good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is this what? Am I turned around? I am turned around. Okay. Commander, Counselor Udina said you'd be coming. If you'll follow me, the council is already in session. We've got our own problems, Counselor. Earth is not in this alone. But Earth was the first Council world hit. By our reports, it faces the brunt of the attack. By your reports. Yeah, we're all gonna get all like, but the reports are mean? accurate. Earth was attacked by the Reapers. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. And it's just the beginning. Let's hear it, guys. We need your help. Everything you can spare. Each of us faces a similar situation. Even now, the Reapers are pressing on our borders. If we lend you our strength to help Earth, our own worlds will fall. We must fight this enemy together. And so we should just follow you to Earth? Even if we were to unite our fleets, do you really believe we could defeat the Reapers? I don't expect you to follow me without a plan. Counselors. We have that plan, a blueprint, created by the Protheans during their war with the Reapers. A blueprint for what? We're still piecing it together, but it appears to be a weapon of some sort. Capable of destroying the Reapers? So it would seem. The scales. It would be a colossal undertaking. No. I forwarded the plans to Admiral Hackett. The remnants of the human fleet are already gathering resources to begin construction. Our initial calculations suggest it is very feasible to build. If we work together. Have you considered that the Reapers destroyed the Protheans? What good did this weapon do? It was incomplete. There was a missing component, here. Something referred to only as the Catalyst. But they ran out of time before they could finish building it. Do you really believe this can stop the Reapers? I mean, man, it would sure be nice to have you guys actually believe me and, like... Help me out, because they spent this whole time in the last, like, two years or whatever, like, being like, yo, silly shepherd, reapers are a myth, blah, blah, blah. And now they're all like, yo, the reapers are pressing on our borders, and it's just wild. It's like, Bruh. And they're still going to be like, like, I get it. Like, you don't want to leave your own systems, like, you know, bereft of anything. Like, it wouldn't, it's not fair of us to say, hey, yeah, come help us on Earth. Like, there need to be, like, a different potentially like uh like an engagement that like works its way across you know the systems you know but um wherever is being hit the hardest should probably be the first place you go you know i mean i'm not, I'm not a military strategist obviously but like i don't know like this idea of like separating and like trying to like hole up and like defend our own systems and our own territory is like they're just gonna pick us apart like that has to that has to be very obvious to them you know what i mean but like I don't know. It's just frustrating. It's just frustrating this whole, like, you know, the divide and conquer mentality only works for the invader. You know what I mean? Like, the divide and protect only, 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 like, uh, encourages a divide and conquer mentality. So. Liara believes it can work, and so do I. And while I haven't always agreed with Udina, he's right about this. We need to stand together, now more than ever. The Reapers won't stop it, Earth. They'll destroy every organic being in the galaxy if we don't find a way to stop them. What I've been saying for years. Oh my gosh, you guys. The cruel and unfortunate truth is that while the Reapers focus on Earth, we can prepare and regroup. We are convening a summit amongst our species. If we can manage to secure our own borders, we may once again consider aiding. I'm sorry, Commander. That is the best we can do. And that, I mean, it, it is. Shepard, meet me in my it office. It is harsh, but like, I get it, you know? I hope that's an offer of support. I'll be digging up what I can on this Prothean device, Shepard. 
So basically, Shepard needs to go around and save all the other systems before she can save Earth. Is how it is. is boiling You're down. a bunch of self-concerned jackasses, Shepard. Kitty, no, you don't shut the laptop. The council, but humanity will always be considered don't second do it. Rate. How can they be so blind? They're scared, and they're looking out for themselves. Our people are scared, and we are looking out for them the best we know how. Counselor? Commander, I can't give you what you need, but I can tell you how to get it. I'm Excuse listening. me? Primarch Fedorian called the War Summit, but we lost contact with him when the Reapers hit Palavan. Those meetings won't proceed without him. The Normandy is one of the few ships that can extract Primarch Fedorian undetected. How convenient that I can help you, but you can't help me. You know. Also, I do want to make a quick callback to the to the to the Death Star idea of like building like a super massive weapon that'll like take care of everything. Like, that's what it reminds me of, right? Is like the the Death Star was supposed to be this like they're like it's a weapon for peace. It will it will ensure that nobody you know causes war ever again you know and it's just like designed to be a planet killer you know and just like hover and like the amount of resource extraction it took to build that thing was astronomical like in some of the like it's canonic some of it's canonical now but like some of the like legends material too they talk about it where it's just like the amount of like suffering and like stuff that went into building it and like the resource extraction and like the man power and alien power and all that stuff, you know. But no, yeah, the idea of like building a giant weapon doesn't really make you it doesn't make you a good guy in my book, you know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't make you sound like a good person. <laughs> so far you've only explained how I can help you. It might seem that way. But the leaders of this summit will be the ones deciding our future, the fate of our fleets, where they fight and with whom. A grateful Primarch would be a tremendous ally in your bid to unite us. We're at war, and you want me to play politician? If it gets you what you need, what does it matter? <sighs> Our latest intelligence says that the Primarch was moved to a base on Palavan's largest moon. Garrus! I've done all I can to help. The rest is up to you. I'm curious how the, the power exploit works between, like, the counselors. There is one other thing. The council wanted me to tell you, we've chosen to uphold your Spectre status. Thanks. And various resources will be made available to you. Good day. Well, that went well. It's a start. I'll talk to the others in the meantime. See if we can support this summit. Move things along. Thanks. Like, we don't exactly have, like, a president of Earth, you know? Like... The, the Earth nations are all still, like, distinct. We just have the Alliance um, that makes, like, military decisions for, like, galactic stuff. Um, but the, the, the Alliance Council's been taken out. Like, it's the only one left... Well, it's not even... Anderson's not even technically a member of the Council. The only one left is Hackett. He's, like, an admiral. And then, I think, I think technically Anderson's an admiral at this point, too. The Council. You saved their lives. And for what? Apologies that boil down to maybe later. If we don't figure out something, maybe later will be an epitaph on a mass grave of 11 billion. I know what I'm gonna do. What are you gonna do? Humanity has created some goodwill in the galaxy. Now we cash in our chips. I will get what funding I can, what materials I can, and spread the message. Help the humans, help yourselves. I'll institute a draft in our colonies and order all civilian ships armed. Work on the Prothean device will be around the clock. Um, shoot, what was it too? Um, oh, that's why it's kind of funny when you walk over to the Volus, who's like, we want to help in the human effort. Like at that point, it hasn't even been announced yet. <laughs> Um, but I wandered over a little early, and it's scripted to happen a little early. Any news from Earth? There is constant news. All of it bad. The Reapers are destroying satellites and the old nuclear missile silos, along with everything else that could help. We have a handful of quantum entanglers spread out over the continents. All other communication is cut. What's your read on the counselors? 
Any angles I could pursue? Tavos is a diplomat and compromiser, but she's wrapped up in defending Asari space like a mother panther. Valern is out of his depth. The Salarians like their wars won before they start. They're frightened now. Use that. And Sparatus, I'd take what he offers. It's strange days when the Turians are the least hostile to humans. And there's a need there. So he's, I mean, obviously I don't like Duna very much. And later on, there's definitely an issue, even bigger issue. Um, but he's good at his job, you know? Like, you take his advice here because he is a politician at heart, you know? And he, he can read people very, very well. You're a Citadel counselor. Don't you have options when the others block you like this? With Parliament destroyed and Shastri gone, I have more power than any human in history. But today, you saw how little that is. Rest assured, I will not be counted out long. I know I can move mountains. Do not lose sight of that, because the task before us is moving planets. I need to check. Yeah, I think... Uh, is there some sort of, like, intergalactic parliament? I don't know. I don't know what Shastri is. I could probably look it up in the Codex. Did you know a lot of people on Earth? Many. It's monstrous to think of them being snuffed out, of course, but the part that gets me is Arcturus. I must know... I must have known most of the Alliance Parliament on a first-name basis. I require the, the Alliance second Parliament. VI just to track all their birthdays and anniversaries. Rose Garden stuff, but to have it all gone. Oh, that's right. I think we need to read it, but... We, they, I don't know if they've talked about it in here, but I think the entire Arcturus station was taken out. I should go. I'll be here. Let me check. Blah, 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 blah. What am I, journal? No. Mm, Karshan's the Batarian refugees. Uh, Reapers took out Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would, would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. The Reapers bypassed the 6th and 7th fleets at Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected since the navies of organic species would never risk coming out of FTL within combat range or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines at Arcturus Station. I knew it was in here somewhere. More than a dozen Reaper capital ships and gave the, engaged the Alliance's 2nd, 3rd, and 5th fleets there were this was mere screening for the main force dozens more capital ships continued through the Sharon relay where the first fleet had been lying in wait but was soon destroyed the fourth fleet near earth had a few minutes of advance warning it's no better chance after destroying earth's convoys small reaper destroyers wiped out all gps and communication satellites in earth's orbit and cut the undersea fiber optic cables that link the continents Earth resistance now relies on outdated radio towers and a few quantum entanglement communicators whose matched pairs happens to be on other continents or outside the solar systems. Communications is so limited that the fate of entire nations remains unknown. The capital ships bombarded defense installations and in industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Aljubal, and Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers ascended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of being, reapers being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. Like, just imagine an entire city, entire cities being wiped out. Like, it's monstrous to think of. This game is really heavy. Honestly, it's really heavy. For every thousand Batarian refugees, there are a thousand and one stories about how the Reapers invaded the Batarian systems. A few elements are common to almost every version, however, the Reapers survived first in the Volar system and immediately destroyed its communications network. The Hegemonious Department of Information Control blamed the loss of signal and space weather, but scrambled ships to the system nonetheless. Within a day, Reaper capital ships appeared in the Harsa system and descended on the Batarian homeworld, Kashan. For all the rhetoric about the Hegemony's military prowess, the response to the Reapers was uncoordinated moments after the Information Minister took to the extranet and announced that unknown ships were destroying all space traffic near Kashan. The Defense Minister declared that there was no reason to panic. The planet's convoys were destroyed next, creating an ominous silence that has persisted ever since. Fearing they were next, Batarian colonies across Hegemony space began evacuations. So many refugees poured into the human-occupied excess cluster that Systems Alliance officials at first thought that the Batarians were invading. More systems have gone dark as their convoys were destroyed, and millions more Batarians trapped on their planet sit waiting for the Reapers. 
Could you freaking imagine? You know what I mean? Like, it, or to have something come out of space and just annihilate you and everything you know. Annihilate the people, the places, the technology, everything. Uh, estimates of their location in dark space suggest they can travel nearly 30 light years. We do not require organic species energy supplies. They sometimes appear wreathed in static discharge when they land on planets. Yeah, there's just, there's so much. There's just so much they can the do. The Reaper called Harbinger oh, yeah, this guy is believed to be the oldest and largest in the Reaper Armada. From the reaches of dark space, Harbinger managed to control the Collectors, a race of human-sized insectoid bipeds, as it sent them on a campaign to kill and gather humans from vulnerable colonies. The collectors became a Alliance terrifying force. intelligence has tentatively identified Arbinger as one of the ones leading the attack. Ah, uh, and on Earth. Okay, <laughs> they all look indistinguishable, but I think they probably would have slight differences. Um. Anyway, I'm distracted. I'm depressed. I'm so de like just like this seems so insurmountable and like the game does a really good job of making it feel insurmountable like you feel the pressure like that you know you feel a fraction of what Shepard has to be feeling you know what I mean also that they change the run animation in this game like instead of her being hunched over and like running like she's in armor when she's wearing casual clothes then they also made her thinner and like a longer torso which I don't really like like I don't know why they changed her model they did it in the original too. This is just going off of the original. Um, like I think they made her thinner, and they made her arms smaller. And also when she runs now, instead of like running, oh jeez, uh, instead of running like she's um, hunched over in armor while she's in regular clothes, she now just kind of like flails her arm like she's skipping through a poppy field or something. You know? Let's say before we talk to this woman, Commander Shepard. Commander, the people of the Shut Alliance... Up. Commander Shepard, Kalisa bent seen in Al Jelani. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked <laughs> Shepard! How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Is that the best we can expect from the Alliance? I came to get help for Earth. For everyone. What about all the people suffering while you play politics with the Council? What about them? What do you want me to do? How can you stand here while our families die? What are you going to do? Kalisa, we're doing everything we can. Before they cut the feeds, there were so many dead. I'm gonna stop the Reapers or die trying, but I need your help. Keep asking the hard questions. Don't let the Council forget about Earth. I will. Thank you, Commander. You can punch her lights out, which is satisfying. We haven't always seen eye to eye. No. But I'm glad you're on our side. Like, I don't know, what does she want me, one woman, to do? You know? Oh yeah, the war asset. Where does that go? I didn't get to look at that, I think. But... Uh, I don't know. Maybe not here. Oh, I think I gotta look at it at my war asset table. I have a war asset table. We haven't accessed it yet because I don't think it's been opened to us. Um, but when do I get to see my briefcase? One. I'm gonna check again. I'm not. I'm not actually 100% sure when he shows up. Oh, every time I see this guy sitting here, I'm like, me? Nope, not him. Bane, my beloved, where are you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we meet him in the hospital. Oh, I think I have to get an email from him. I think that's what happened. One moment. I think I have to get an email from him. 
No, and we can't check it on Caden. Uh, the door is locked until the next uh, significant thing happens. Ilya was under attack. Girl. I just don't know how without... Oh, good. Okay, here's Psychological Trauma Electric Boogaloo 3. They kind of just throw you into it, but this is, uh, she's dreaming right now. Which, to be fair, it might have been handled a little bit oddly, but, again, I, I like that they include this, that they show, like, it's not just, like, facial expressions she's having in the game, or, like, responses to things in the game, like, she's been through so much, and seeing the, her worst fears come to pass, essentially, you know? Like, uh, she would have trauma. She would have, she would have dream nightmares, you know? And watching a child die is not easy. Like, not that I have any experience with that, but like, I, it's probably, sounds like one of the most horrific things you'd have to see, you know? Like, I think there are some theories that the kid's not real. That it's all in Shepard's head, too, but um, I don't know about that. That seems to be going too deep for me. Maybe not, though. Like I said, I haven't looked a ton into this, to those theories. But the kid's like a representation of Earth, right? Like, of everything she couldn't say in one shot, you know? Her arms are so skinny! Need a mod to make it better. She looks much better in two. What's up? I look. Ayara, can I help I you? I look exhausted. I've been forwarding the Turian counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. That's nice. Are you alright? She keeps saying I know to these things. Like you said it about Caden, and it's like. It's just brutal. It's brutal. I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can. And you'll get back there in time to help. Mm. I hope you're right. Yeah. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard, I'm Specialist... Oh. Mm. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. I was just leaving. Commander Shepard... I'm Com Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R. You shouldn't be coming up to my I room. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. Like there weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. Uh she freaking should be like contacting me through messages at you know not coming up to my room. My room is a sacred space. Nobody's allowed over there. Unless it's an emergency. Slow down, specialist trainer. You're doing fine. Thank you. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under He was going to take it from me for as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard, some of our systems require further testing, and specialist trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? Edie's an AI. 
fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, Edie, and I apologize for all those times I talked about how... attractive your voice was. Anyway, shall I give you a tour? I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. In the CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on Deck 3. I think she's claimed that room. And there you I'm are. I'm surprised you got Still a picture of it. Before. It just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like oh to Oh my gosh, that man. I know we're in war and all, but he just can't leave me alone. It's constant. It's constant in this game. Admiral Hackett's constantly bothering me. Commander. Udina updated me on your meeting with the Council. Sounds like they're running scared. You also get yoinked around a lot into these cutscenes. Like, I don't have the option to, like, run down and, like, talk to people on my way for some of this stuff. You just kind of get yoinked into it. Which I can see how it's like, yeah, you know, give me back. <laughs> give it back to me. Give me back control, <laughs> you know. We did present them with a lot of unknowns. They're feeling threatened and want immediate solutions, not theories. Theories are all we've got right now. What's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Salarians. I'll bypass the Council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good, I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it, and if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device, when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. Uh, there was a mobile app, uh, like a lot, I don't know if games still do it, but there was, um, it was popular back in the day to have mobile apps that connected to the video game, um, and you could do, like, I, I did it so much in Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag with the pirates, you could control, like, pirate ships and stuff, and, um, send them out on missions and like get resources and stuff that would actually show up in your game and that's how like i i was i was meticulous about that and like i would get like you'd have like a little command center that you could go to on um on the ship where you could kind of do in-game stuff but you could also incorporate your mobile game asset stuff as well and i did that so much i i really enjoyed the mobile game itself and i enjoyed immensely the resources i got because i was super obsessed with upgrading everything in that game i got like maybe 30 percent of the way through the story but i fully upgraded literally everything in that game the the whaling boat my ship all the armor options all my weapons gears pouch everything was fully upgraded because i spent so much time hunting and doing resource hunting in the game for one thing but also using the mobile app which really really helped for ship upgrades and it was fun i enjoyed that i can't remember exactly the specifics but i remember actually enjoying the mobile game itself this game had a similar one um i remember doing it i'm pretty sure i did it um and I'm not actually 100 I, I say that, I'm like, I'm sure, dude. I'm not actually 100% sure. I am pretty sure you can max out your war assets in this game without the mobile game, which I don't think you have access to anymore anyway. Um, but there was always this, like, what do you call it? Like, uh, sort of like an extended, like, war assets, um, like, S plus or what I don't know like the, the next tier of war assets that was almost specifically reserved for like expansion from the mobile game um, so I'm pretty sure if you play the base game you can't actually like totally 100% your war assets but you can 
you can within you can uh, complete a hundred percent of the in-game war assets. There's just like this extra bit from the mobile game that you could also do. Um, which now that I think about it, I'm not actually sure if I played it or not because I don't think I knew how to. No, I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I did it. Because I think I had to look it up, and I was like, am I going to fail? Because I was freaking out. I was like, do I need the mobile game? And I think I found out that you don't need the mobile game to get all of the in-game war assets and have the, like, 100% completion, essentially, of in-game stuff. That is what you need for the best outcome at the end of the game, you know? What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the With enemy. shortwave radios? Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. Uh, games like this and movies like Transformers honestly make me um, <laughs> think I really need to uh, figure out how old way old like old radios work because it's always like in every zombie movie, every like in Transformers. I think it was the first or second one where like they the the. Uh, what is it? The not the Autobots, the not the Omicrons. That's <laughs> COVID. Um, Decepticons. Uh, they like shut down technology, at least in a certain area. Like they shut down like long range communications um, at the dam, I think. Yeah, and the Hoover Dam. And you have to, they have to like figure out how to use like uh, I think it's a short wave, might be a long wave radio, but like they have to learn, they have to remember how to use this like radio, this super ancient radio. And I'm sure the military actually does currently, like their communications officers, I'm sure they're proficient, like the US military, I'm sure most militaries are too, but they have proficiency in like older forms of communication. Um, it's not just about pushing buttons, you know? Oh, anyway, I should find a soda. Also, I can't freaking wait till we get Garrus because I mentioned that this game is constantly throwing punch after punch after punch at Shepard. And it feels like she never gets a chance to breathe and calm down. And this game is 100% the reason why Garrus Vicarian is one of the most important characters to me. Because he, I think, is the... As far as I remember, he's the only character Shepard can breathe around. You know what I mean? That, that he's the one who understands like some of these burdens of leadership and like he says things to her and is like you need t to breathe for a second, you know? Whereas most other people are like Shepard, we need this, we need this, we need that. And like Garrus is like I get that, I get all of that, but you need to stop for a moment and like sleep or like relax for like five minutes you know and like it just it's making me tear up just thinking about it because it's just like that man's got your back come hell or high water you know what i mean regardless of if you romance him or not um he's one of the most important characters in the game so to me but yes thank you all for watching i think i'll go ahead and call this one here we've had a lot happening and a lot being thrown at us and while i'm thinking of it i'm gonna save <laughs> uh but thank you again for watching i appreciate it really quick one i said thank you to my patrons to all my patrons but to especially we skeleto my sapling to patron thank you so much for your support and a extra special shout out to christopher my tree tier patron thank you so so much for your support i really appreciate it a lot and i hope you're enjoying the series so yes thank you all again for watching and i hope to see you in the next one